Yo, 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 I am not Josh Yo, but I am Joe from Workbench. So let's talk about making an 8-bit sort of growth look. But I did steal his shirt. So let's get started. So this is what we're going to be making this week. And by this week, I mean like 40 weeks ago, because I actually started making this in prep for keyframes and it was something I just never showed. Anyway, it's simple, but the look is pretty neat. So I figured I'd show you guys how to do it. And it doesn't have to have that kind of edge. You can have like an 8-bit kind of thing going on. Or you can apply it to text if you wanted to do that instead. Or just a mask on a shape or anything really. You can also turn off the bit look and get kind of this like moldy look to it, which is also pretty neat. This one's a little slower because I got a lot of extra stuff on it, but there you go. It's got a little bit of blur and other things. And here we are back to that. Since that was pretty much just for a still, I, I use some kind of heavy effects like add grain from After Effects and all that kind of junk. But you can see it has this mold growth kind of thing going on, which I think has a nice look. So let's go back to this first one and I will show you all of the magic. Now you can do this with one layer, but you're going to have some compromises with how the edge goes. Like you'll either end up with it almost perfect and then you'll have some blockiness in here or the edge will be apparent the entire time. So to get this where it kind of grows from nothing, we're going to use two layers. So everything really takes place in this layer and this top layer is really just for alpha. So I'm going to turn this off. So you can see the first thing we have is a fractal noise. Let me turn all this stuff off. Fractal noise. Let me open up our keys here. So you can see our brightness is animated from negative 44 to 131, so it gets all the way to white. And you can obviously adjust that to taste if you don't want the stuff to go away. You can also have it evolving or moving, but for this, I just wanted it to stay in place. So then our next effect is extract, and that is also animated. We're just animating the black point, so you can see that as it comes in, there's actually nothing that is black in here. So basically, wherever there is a dark black that is under whatever black point is, it'll be empty. So if we turn this on and hide this guy, you can see that it's transparent there. So this is animated from 255 down to zero. So that no matter what, by the end, we have everything in there. Those are pretty much the only keys on here and they're kind of what smooths this thing out. So depending on how you have these curves set up for these eases, you can get different looks. So we close these two up. And then the next thing we have is a mosaic. And the mosaic has an expression on it just to make sure the blocks are square. And we've also checked sharp colors. So I'm gonna hit EE on this so we can bring up that expression because it's pretty simple. I'm not gonna bring it up into expressionist or anything. We're just setting a variable called F equal to the comp width, which is 1920 in this case, divided by the horizontal block value, right? So I have 240 in here. And then in the next line, we're doing 1080, which is the vertical height, divided by that number that we just got. So divided by F. So basically by dividing the width of the comp by the number of horizontal blocks, we get the width of each block, and so then we're going to divide the height of the comp by the width of the block so that we can figure out how many blocks we need vertically. So that's that. And then the next thing we have is set mat, which basically just pulls in the alpha from that logo at the top. And then we're just doing find edges. I thought I had done CC kernel, which you can do, but I guess I didn't in this one. So Deca Digital, you were correct, actually. So a plus on that one. All right. So uh, the other only other thing here is in this find edges effect. We're not doing this at full 100%. We had this at the 43%, so you can kind of still get in some of this look into it, but also have the edges, so that where it's lighter, it's kind of fainter, so it kind of has a little bit of depth to it. So uh, yeah, that's actually pretty much it, but when you time this thing out properly, you can get a nice growth with it. You can use this in all sorts of other ways. I actually experimented with doing this with circuitry, kind of like we did earlier in the year, and I'll link that down below so you can check it out. You can also just use this to reveal other things. And in the project file, I did actually include some mats that you can render out and use in other projects. And there's also pretty much every setting in here that I've used so that you can take a peek and everything and see how it's all built. And for those who always want to know how the thumbnail is made, we got a color correction on top of here with Lumetri. And uh, I don't know why I said it like that. We got a Fuji Reala 500D Kodak in here. Shadows are tinted more blue. Highlights are tinted more orange, yellow. You know, just to make sure this isn't just black and white. And uh, then I have a light leak thing that I had made. And that actually looks like, well, I'm going to crank this guy up. Looks like that. So we undo down to 10% because I don't want it to do too much. And just add it over top uh, with this thing off. It's just like that, which is kind of flat. So added that in just to kind of bring some light back into some other areas. I want this to have kind of like a microscope feel. Even though we're not looking at the moldy one, 
it still looks kind of interesting because of the layering. Then under that, I have a vignette and noise, which in this case is actually now grain. So I'm using just After Effects' add grain thing. I would have used Boris's Sapphire add grain because it's faster than After Effects's, but uh, I didn't have it licensed on my laptop at the time, and so it was easier to just do this. And of course, we also have CC vignette, and there's also a great one in Sapphire as well. So then I have a blur layer under here, and we have a camera lens blur set to 15. We're using a blur map at the bottom, and that's basically just a fractal noise that looks like that. Very smooth, very even. And this logo setup is pretty much the same thing as before. It's just that the block size of the mosaic is a little bigger, so that if this is really small on YouTube, you can see it. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys can find a cool way to use this technique. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out workbench.tv support. And while you're there, make sure to check out the blog. Anyway, as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.